this being the spooky season of Halloween, I thought we'd look at one of military aviation's more mysterious, yet sobering stories. On November the 9th, 1958, a British oil exploration team discovered the wreckage of an old World War II aircraft in the Libyan desert. They radioed authorities at the Wheelis Air Base, but no attempt to investigate the wreck was made as there was no records of any aircraft being lost in that area. Unbeknownst to them, they had stumbled upon the answer of one of World War II's aviation mysteries. What happened to the Lady Be Good? So the Lady Be Good was a US Air Force B-24D Liberator. It was assigned to the 514th Bomb Squadron, which formed part of the 376th Bomber Group stationed in Suluk Airfield in Libya. On April the 4th, 1943, the Lady Be Good set off on its first combat mission, a bombing raid over Naples, from which it disappeared without a trace. The aircraft had departed from Saluk Field that afternoon with a formation of other B-24s. However, poor weather had forced half of the bombers to return to base, but the Lady Be Good and three other bombers carried on with their mission. The Lady had been one of the last bombers to take off from the airfield, its small size forcing the group to take off in waves, and she never caught up with the rest of the formation. That evening, after even more poor weather had forced the other bombers to switch to secondary targets, the Lady still hadn't reached her target and was forced to turn back around. The last communication received from the bomber was from the pilot, First Lieutenant William J. Hatton, advising that the aircraft's automatic direction finder was inoperable and requesting navigation assistance. For those who are unaware, an automatic direction finder, commonly known as an ADF, can be used to home in on a particular station, such as an airfield or a navigation post, for example. After this communication, the aircraft was never heard from again. A search and rescue operation was deployed, but no evidence of the aircraft or its crew was ever found, and it was assumed that it had gone down over the Mediterranean Sea. This was not a singular event. Many aircraft seemingly disappeared without a trace during the war for one cause or another, but it always left the lingering question, what really happened? Considering the assumption that the lady was at the bottom of the Mediterranean, it came as quite the surprise when she was found in the Calancio Sand Sea, Libya, almost 450 miles south of Saluk Field. After the initial sighting of the wreckage in 1958, it was spotted again several times in 1959 by overflying oil surveyors, and a recovery team was sent out from Wheelis Air Base in May of that year. What they found was a remarkably well-preserved aircraft, albeit it had broken into two pieces on impact. She was so well-preserved that one of the engines was still in working condition, the radio was operable, and one of her defensive machine guns could still fire, despite 15 years of sand exposure. It was a remarkable find, and despite even finding drinkable water containers inside the plane, the recovery team could not find signs of the remaining crew. The initial investigation included extensive ground searches that coordinated with air units. Several interesting finds were made, including equipment such as parachutes, boots, and markers, but no bodies were ever found. Eventually, after months of investigation, the search was called off as it was presumed that the men's bodies had been claimed by the shifting sands. However, six months later, there was a new breakthrough. British Petroleum employees located the remains of five crew members, which were identified as belonging to Lieutenant Hatton, Lieutenant Toner, Lieutenant Hayes, Sergeant Adams, and Sergeant Lamotte. The site yielded a trove of items, the most valuable of which was a diary belonging to Lieutenant Toner. As the investigation continued, the pieces of the puzzle were slowly coming together. On the night of April the 4th, 1943, the Lady Be Good had radioed for a directional reading. However, despite the airbase firing signal flares, she proceeded to overshoot her destination. The directional reading had been sent. However, the base's radio direction finder only had a single loop antenna. As the aircraft's direction finder couldn't distinguish between a signal in front or behind, there was no way for the crew to tell if they were heading towards or away from their target. Obviously, they had assumed that they were still over the Mediterranean and therefore north of their base, when in fact they were heading south, plunging deep inland. After travelling over 400 miles inland, the Lady Be Good began to run out of fuel. It was a dark night with poor weather, and the inexperienced crew assumed that they were still flying over the dark waters of the Mediterranean rather than the dark sand dunes of Libya. 
The crew bailed out of the aircraft. However, as it was later sadly found, 2nd Lieutenant John Wawrowka's parachute failed to open properly, and he died on impact. The other eight crew members survived the descent, slowly meeting up with the use of their flare guns. The crewless B-24 carried on flying for another 16 miles before coming down relatively intact. Now, despite having life-saving water and equipment on board, an attempt was not made to reach the crashed bomber, as the survivors estimated that their base was only 100 miles away, when in fact it was four times that distance. With only half a canteen of water between them, the men marched through the desert. Lieutenant Toner's diary tells of a nine-day march through hell, where there was never any sight of life other than themselves. Eventually, five of them were too weak to carry on, and the others continued on in the hope of finding salvation. Unfortunately, their efforts were in vain. However, it cannot be discounted the level of individual achievement that was made by these survivors. It was estimated that, on average, one could survive in those desert conditions for approximately 30 miles before perishing. Yet, all of the survivors had travelled over 50, and some bodies were found as far as 100 miles away from the initial landing sites. Had fate been kinder, had the crew decided to travel back to the wreck of their aircraft to gather supplies and radio for help, this may have been a very different story. Eventually, all of the crew's remains, except those of Sergeant Vernon Moore, were found and brought back to the United States. Though the Lady Beegood and her crew did not survive their ordeal, their story has inspired books and been referenced in film and media as an example of courage and human endurance in the harshest of conditions. The memorial window in the chapel at Wheelis Air Base is dedicated to their honour, and one of the propellers of the Lady Beegood can be found in Lake Linden, Michigan.